Good afternoon. We extend you a warm welcome from Provo, Utah. I'm Sister Leffler, and I will be the host for today's class. Today's class is offered to the general public by the BYU Family History Library. Questions related specifically to the family history work of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints should be addressed on an individual basis with one of our missionaries, either in person or virtually. Our presenter today is Elder Johnson, who has a love of learning and extensive background in family history and genealogical research. We hope you'll find your time with us productive and enjoyable. I will now turn the time over to Elder Johnson. Good afternoon. Presentation on Irish census. Got it. There are only two censuses for complete censuses for Ireland, 1901 and 1911. There are census fragments for 1821, 1831, 1841, 1841, and 1851. Census for 1861, 1871, 1881, and 1891 were destroyed by the government. The census for 1821, 1831, 41, and 51 were almost destroyed in the Four Courts Fire in 1922. So we're going to start by Googling Irish census. Come to the National Archives of Ireland, who is the agency responsible for the census. We click on search the census records for Ireland 1901 and 1911. Our case study is going to be Hugh Kelly, born about 1858. In County Tyrone. He's Catholic and he's employed by the English government. To the census and enter this information. See that. Tyrone, age 43. Here it comes up. Hugh Kelly from Fern, uh, Castle Caulfield, County Tyrone age 40, male. I'm gonna click on his name here to give me, to show the household. There's his household. You, head of the family, age 40, Margaret, 47, and so on, children. Now, the problem here is religion. Okay, and then we're gonna show all the information up here and see, <clears throat> what his occupation is. This Hugh Kelly is a farmer and he's Presbyterian, which doesn't match our notes for our other Hugh Kelly. So our conclusion is we have the wrong Hugh Kelly. Note the occupation and religion. Our Conclusion is that we may have, uh, Hugh Kelly may have been born in County Tyrone, but lives elsewhere. We're going to use more search options to find the right Hugh Kelly. So we're going to click on more search options. We're going to remove Tyrone from, we're going to search in all counties. And we're going to show the county of origin over here as County Tyrone. Now, we could put a religion in here. We mentioned he was Catholic. But we'll do without that. So we search, and here's two Hugh Kellys. The second one is the one we just looked at. But the first one lives in County Cork. He's 43 years old, and so he's interested. Hugh Kelly. Head of the family, 
He's Roman Catholic. We're going to show all information here to see where he was born. And his birthplace was County Tyrone. His occupation is Chief Preventine Office, HM, which I think is His Majesty's or Her Majesty's Customs. So this is the English government over here. He works for the English government. He's born in Tyrone and he's Catholic. This is a match. Now we're gonna look at a new development that just occurred. Ancestry and Find My Past have entered into an agreement with the National Archives of Ireland, which allows them to access the National Archives Census database for 1901 and 1911. This allows the user to access the Irish census with the input interface of these two inter organizations. This enables the user to search for two individuals in the same household, for example, husband and wife or father and child. For our case study, we're going to use Bartley O'Donnell, born in 1900 in County Galway, and his father Thomas. Click on Ancestry, and we'll go to the card catalog. That's under Search. Under the keyword, we're going to put 1901 census, and then we're going to click on Search. Up comes web colon Ireland comma census 1901. This is where we want to go. So we enter Bartley O'Donnell, born in 1900, Galway, Ireland, his father, Thomas. And we click on search. So here's a record of Bartley O'Donnell in Ponaclaw, Ponaclaw, Moycullen, Galway. He's a son, his father is Thomas, and his mother is Mary. That matches our case study. So we go to the next, we, we're going to look at this household. And here we have that household, Thomas O'Donnell, age 40, his wife, Mary, 25, a son, Thomas, three, Bartley O'Donnell, no age shown, and Sarah Lydon, age 14. So the question is, why no age for Bartley? Well, he hasn't turned one yet. So they, rather than put in zero, which is nonsensical, they left it blank. Now the question is, who is Sarah Lydon who's living in this household? Click over here on Sarah Lydon and it comes up that Sarah Lydon is a sister-in-law to the head of the family. And uh, so this suggests that Mary O'Donnell's maiden name is Lydon. Now the residence, Ponaclaw is a townland, Moycullen is a civil parish, Galloway is a county. So this residence place gives us pretty precise uh, area of where, where this family was. Now we have some suggested records over here on the right side. And we're going to explore some of these suggested records. One of the huge advantages of Irish ancestry's Irish connection is the suggested records. So one of these is a U.S. Find a Grave Index for Bartley O'Donnell. So we're going to click on that. And here it comes up. Bartley O'Donnell, born in 1900, death in 1878 and dies in Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania. His spouse is Ellen, and he has a child, Bartley. Now there's another suggested record here, so let's look at that one also. We have a Bartsley O'Donnell, born about 1902, Irish Free State, and 
janitor in Pittsburgh. Now look at the names of his children. Mary, who is his mother's name, Thomas, his father's name, and Bartley, his name. Now I'm going to explore the suggested records for Ellen O'Donnell, who is his wife. And here's a death certificate, and we'll look at that. And this is not actually her birth, death certificate, but it's a death certificate of her son, Joseph. But Joseph, if you'll notice, uh, they've crossed out Bartley and typed in Bartholomew, which Bartley is simply a nickname for Bartholomew. Bartholomew Joseph O'Donnell. And his father is Bartley O'Donnell Sr. And his mother is Ellen Sinan. Now we're going to look for another suggested record for, for Ellen. And here's an Ireland census 1911 for Ellen Sinan. Ellen Sinan, born about 1903, the granddaughter of the head of this house, who was Eliza Sinan. Her father, John, and her mother, Mary, living in Clun Macken. Uh, which is in County Kerry. Now, further investigation of civil registration records would, would be appropriate here. We're not going to do that today. Now, uh, I'm going to suggest that we don't have absolute proof that this uh, Bartland, Bartley uh, was the same guy that we saw back in County, uh, oh boy, I can't even think of the name of the county. But anyhow, it's a good possibility. Now I'm gonna try another search for uh, Bridget Murphy in County Roscommon, whose mother is Maria, and she was born about 1871. So we'll go to find my past. The census land and substitutes. We'll enter Bridget Murphy, born 1901, County Roscommon. Notice down here at the bottom, view one record. Here's the record. And we're going to click on the icon up here at the right hand corner. There she is. Bridget Murphy, daughter of Maria Murphy, who is a widow, age 70. Uh, Bridget Murphy, uh, 30 years old. Now you notice there's three more rows in this. So we'll click on that. And there's three grandchildren, all boys, living in this household too. Now let's evaluate ancestry versus find my past. Ancestry has, uh, find my past has less complicated access to census records. Ancestry is more complicated, but it has these suggested records which make it a clear favorite. Now we're gonna explore census fragments, 1821, 31, 41, and 51. The largest of these fragments is the 1821 census. The largest fragment for the 1821 census is County Cavan. We're gonna use as our case study, Patrick Dolan, born 1817 in County Cavan. So I enter 1821 here in my census year, Patrick Dolan, County Cavan. And here's the results. These last two are duplicates. They differ only in the spelling of the parish. So here's a family, James Dolan, 
Bridget Dolan, Patrick Dolan, age four, Edward Dolan, one, and Thomas Gibney, 14. This looks very promising. Now I'm gonna look at the actual census record that was taken here. And we see that James Dolan here and his wife, Bridget, and their son, Patrick, live right next door to another Dolan family, whose the father being Patrick, Margaret, and several children uh, in that family. Now, logic tells me that they, these two families are related. And if I had to guess, I'd say that Patrick Dolan here, who's 62 years old, or 63 years old, is probably the grandfather of our Patrick Dolan. So what did we learn? Patrick Dolan, age four, and Castle Rahan Parish, County Cabin, Father James, 27, Mother Bridget, 25, Brother Edward, one, Thomas Gibney, 14, who's a servant. Next door, another Dolan family, Patrick, 63, Margaret, 52, and William, 23, Thomas, 21, Margaret, 17, Judith, 14, two boarders, grandson, Thomas Moore, age eight. Now, the census fragments, the 1821 census is, uh, is by far the largest census fragment. There are 160,000 records for County Cabot, 34,000 for Kings slash Offaly, 24,000 for Galway, 18,000 for Fermanagh, and 381 for other jurisdictions. So you can see here Cabot is by far the largest. Now, the 1831 census has a total of 79,000 records. 99.9% .9 are County Londonderry. 1841 census has 15,893 records, of which 97.9% .9 are County Cabot. And the 1851 census has 58,000 records plus and 99.4% County Antrim. Now we're gonna look at census substitutes. When we don't have census, we want to look for substitutes. The most commonly used census substitutes for Ireland are Griffith's valuation and the tithe allotment. Griffith's valuation, 1848 to 1864, was a nationwide valuation of properties for tax purposes. It lists the head of the household and the county, parish, and townland. The tithe allotment, 1823 to 1837, was a tax for supporting the poor and covered all of Ireland except cities and large towns. It also identifies the county, parish, and townland. However, it is estimated that only 40% of households were included. Now, census substitutes show the head of the household only, no family structure, for example, spouse and children. They are a location tool. Other census substitutes that are used would be any historical record that includes a name, location, and a date can be considered a census substitute. For example, our flax growers lists, dog licenses, and petty court, court lists. Now we're gonna use Henry Butler as our case study. Henry lived in County Wexford, Kilton L Parish. We're going to use Griffith's valuation. To access Griffith's valuation, we're going to go to Ask About Ireland and then click on Griffith's valuation. Here's Griffith's valuation. We enter Henry Butler and his parish, Kiltonell Parish, and we search. The result is a Henry Butler, well, there's actually two Henry Butlers here. We're gonna choose the first. 
and we're going to click on the details. They may be the same individual who had properties in more than one location. Here's the details. Henry Butler, his landlord is the Earl of Courttown. His county is Wexford. His parish is Kiltonell, and his townland is Banouche. This was published in 1853. So this is as of 1853. Next, we're going to look at the original page and we'll click on this third icon here. And here's the original page. Now I'm gonna blow that up a little bit so it's easier to see. And we see here, Henry Butler occupying plot number one. The owner is Earl of Court Down. And here's the acre, this first column is acreage. It's 33 plus acres. This is the valuation of, of his land, 14 pounds and 0.5, 16, six uh, evaluation of his house is six pounds and 15 pence, I think it is. The total valuation is 21 pounds. Now, again, I'm gonna look at a map view of of this property, and here it goes. There's Banuge is this red area here, enclosed in this rectangle. And we're gonna blow that up, and here it is. Here's Henry Butler's plot, which is plot number one. This oval down here is an oval surrounding Banuge uh, townland. So you can see that uh map like this, you can go to Ireland and you walk across the, the property that your ancestor actually farmed. Thank you. That concludes our presentation. Elder Johnson, there's a, a question. Robin asks, are there any census records for County Cork between 1830 and 1850? I didn't quite hear the question, but would you repeat? Um, are there any census records for County Cork between 1830 and 1880? Uh, the answer is no. You have to use a census substitute to find where his ancestor lived. Thank you. And thank you, Elder John.